because I spend a lot of time now in an area that I wasn't trained for. I, I, my foundation has a big climate change project, and I'm convinced the only way that we're ever going to deal with this crisis is to prove that it's good economics. The real reason that there's so much controversy over this legislation in Congress, the real reason that they probably won't get a binding agreement at Copenhagen next month uh, when the whole world gathers, is that there are too many people who can't figure out how to do this and make it pay. Eleven years ago, when Al Gore and I did the climate change agreement at Kyoto, and we had a lot to do with the final form of it, the Senate voted against it 98 to nothing before I sent it to them. It's the only bill I ever lost before I sent it to them. It used to, it used to be they'd at least give me the Congress, uh, courtesy of letting me send the bill up before they turned it down. But the reason was that most people thought you couldn't reduce our greenhouse gases without cratering the economy. And besides, it probably wasn't that big a problem. Now, 95% of the people in the field think it's a real big problem, but a lot of people still can't figure out how to do it. Everybody knows the U.S. didn't sign on to that first agreement, but here's something you probably don't know. The 170 nations that signed the agreement all had to commit to do specific things based on what their per capita income was and what their emissions per capita were. The 44 richest with the biggest emissions had to promise to make specific cuts by 2012. You know how many are going to make it? Four. You know why? They didn't have enough married goods. I mean, in other words, we got a lot of legislators here. Most of the time in politics, you debate two things. What are you going to do and how much money are you going to spend on it? Right? When Dr. Anderson or Dr. Sugg or the trustees, they come lo lobby the university, lobby for the university and the legislature, they talk about what they're going to do and what it costs. There's very little time spent on what an engineer spends his or her entire life doing. How are you going to do it? And I would just like to argue to all of you that I think the how question has become more important even than how much are you going to spend on it. How do you propose to spend, turn your good intentions into positive changes? That's what's clouding the whole health care controversy in Washington today. That's what's still clouding the future of the planet because we can't figure out what to do about climate change. And you're honoring a person who spent her entire life in the how business. And now that I'm not in politics anymore and I'm not running for anything, I spend all my time just thinking about whatever I've got, $10 or $10 million, how am I going to spend this money to maximize the intention behind the investment? And the point of that is, of the 44 nations that had to commit to these specific targets, only four are going to make it. Germany, the United Kingdom, Sweden, and Denmark. Why? Because in different ways, they all figured out how to do it. And before the economic collapse of last year, this is the most important thing, all four of those countries' economies outperformed ours in this decade. They generated more jobs, they had rising median incomes, they had declining economic inequality, they had record numbers of new businesses because they figured out how to spark an economic explosion by changing the way we produce and consume energy. That's why we need people in engineering and technology, answering the how questions. That's why I'm very grateful to the people on this panel on, the, on this head table for their contributions to this school. That's why I hope all of you, those of you who represent the legislature and those of you who are just private citizens, will support this endeavor. Our state still ranks, I think, next to last in the percentage of people trained in these fields. We got to have more people in Arkansas who can answer the how question. We actually have always been an immensely practical people. We've always been able to do more with less. And now we're living in an age which will reward that as never before. You have to invest in it. It has to be important to you. And I'm telling you that from my perspective, having been to more than 100 countries since I left office, 
and having seen things from the ground up in the poorest places on earth and the richest nations on earth and the places that are growing fastest and the places that can't get off the dime, the winners are those who can answer the how question. There will never be as much money as you wish there was, and there's always more than you think there is, if it's important and you know how to spend it. And that's really what you are investing in when you support this.